Let's build a full stack application, as fast as I can speak. The application is going to be called PokePo and will let you vote on your favorite Pokemon. Assuming you have Node.js installed, you can create a NuStack project from the command line by typing npx create NuStack app followed by the project name. This command will generate the most up-to-date application boilerplate. After that, cd into the project folder and install the dependencies with npm install. For this project, we are going to use MongoDB. So let's go ahead and npm install MongoDB as well. After everything is installed, let's open VS Code and start the development server. Your application runs on localhost 5000 by default. The application.njs file has the main class of your project. The start function runs once when the server is started. Let's refactor the application and use the dependency startup pattern. We just have to rename the start function to start project and create a new start function that will receive the server context and call start project with the context as an argument just to show that we are in control of when to split the code. Let's set up our database. The first step is to import MongoDB client on top of our application file. Code used only on server functions is removed from the client bundle. Following the same pattern, we can declare a start database function, this time receiving the whole context to indicate that this function will assign to the context. First, we instantiate the Mongo client, then we connect to the local database and we save the database connection on the context. And finally, we call a start database in our application start. Let's create our first component by creating a new file in the source folder called po.njs. We can easily generate a new stack component using the VS Code extension. This is a simple renderable component that extends NullStack and just renders the word PO in a div. To use this component, let's go back to our application component and import it there. This gives us access to a new tag which we can use to render anywhere in our application. In this case, we will replace the link for the documentation with PO, since nobody ever reads the documentation. And this is the preview so far. Go ahead, pat yourself in the back, you are a hacker. Going back to the Poe component, let's add some functionality to it. The initiate method is a special async function that is called during the initial component lifecycle. This is the place where you run server functions that will affect the server-side rendered HTML. Let's fetch the top 10 Pokemon from the Pokedex collection to the Pokedex instance variable. I'm aware that Pokemon has no plural form, but I felt like this would make the example easier to read for the non dweebs the Pokedex instance variable is going to be an empty array by default. To declare a server function, we must flag it as static and async to indicate that it will not share the instance scope. We are going to use the database that we previously assigned to the server context and simply return the result of a query without worrying about glue code. To reflect the state into the DOM, let's map over each Pokemon and list them. To make this example faster, I went ahead and populated the database collection with some Pokemon off screen. And now this is the preview of our application. I know, before I was being sarcastic, but now you are truly a hacker. Let's make this application look even shinier by replacing the simple list with a component. But instead of declaring a whole new component, we can share the instance by declaring an inner component. Inner components have their name start with render, followed by any uppercase letter. Let's take the Pokemon props out of the context and return some more visually appealing markup. And now, our application looks, well, like this. As you know, you can't be hardcore without CSS. So let's copy and paste some CSS into our application.scss and create a file called po.scss to paste some more scss and import it inside our po.njs just to be organized. And now, our application is waifu material. It is worth noting that we have no requests in our network tab. That happens because NullStack server-side renders the first visited route and generated SEO-ready HTML. Let's start a new feature-driven component by creating a vault.njs file and paste some more CSS in its equivalent CSS file to keep the pattern. And this time, we are going to import the vault component inside the poll component instead of the application and call it inside the poll render since features can be composed of multiple other smaller features. So far, nothing exploded. 
The vote component will have two string variables in its states, a choice and a message, and it will render a very simple form. In NullStack, we can bind variables by reference. Let's take over the submit event of the form by declaring an onSubmit attribute with a function reference. We are going to declare an async function called submitVote. This function will invoke a server function, and since server functions are static, we have to manually send an object with the user choice. Let's declare a new server function. This time, it will be triggered by an event, instead of being called while pre-rendering the page. Let's use the database one more time, and this time, we are going to also destructure the choice from the context. This works because the object passed as an argument when invoking the server function is temporarily merged into the server context. This function is a little more complex, so let's take a deep breath. First, we generate a slug from the user choice. Then, we find out if that Pokemon already exists in the database by name or number. This opens two paths for us to follow. If the Pokemon doesn't exist, we search for it in the Poke API. If it doesn't exist there either, we return an error message. If it does exist, we add a vote to it and save some of its data in the Pokedex collection, and return its name. If the Pokemon existed in the database in the first place, we simply modify it to increment the number of votes and return its name. After we finish being amazed by the fact that we can capture the return of a server function in the client, let's use those two possible variables to update the component state. If we have an error, we set its value to the message variable. Else, let's update the router URL with the Pokemon name. The router is part of the client context. Observe the network tab while I filled this form with a Digimon name. An API call was made to an automatically generated microservice that returns JSON and reflects the DOM. Now observe when I choose the number of an actual Pokemon. An API call is made again and the URL changes to the Pokemon name, but nothing else happens in the browser because we are dealing with the router and that's the subject of the next video. To prove that it worked, we can inspect the database with Compass and verify that a new Pokemon was added. If you want to learn more about Nullstack, like and subscribe.